Welcome to part 3 of the partial screen shake shady tutorial in Unity by Peerplay. In the previous part, we've created a controller script to trigger the screen shakes. In this part, we will add a noise function to the shader to calculate the screen offset with a smoother result than that of random. If you find the contents of this tutorial helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you enable me to create these for my peers and you get access to the tutorial source files and exclusive content. Special thanks to Wayne Glows. Let's go to the shader graph editor and add a noise function. So in part one, we created this function and this outputs the X and the Y value to this factor four. And now besides the calculation of random, we're going to also calculate noise. And then we'll create a Boolean and depending on whether the Boolean is true or false, we're going to input that outcome into this factor four. So let me ungroup this factor four by control U. Now I just have here the random shake calculation. And let's go underneath here and create the noise. Now the calculation of noise is quite similar to the random. Uh, we're also going to start with time. Uh, we need a noise function. So let's type noise and let's get the simple noise. Now simple noise takes in a UV2, which is a bit similar to the seed. So we also need a factor two. And we'll connect the factor two to the UV input. Now to create the noise, we want to be offsetting the scale and we want to be offsetting the time. So we'll create two floats, one for the scale and one for the speed. So let's go to this plus float and we'll call one the noise scale. And another float, we'll call this the noise speed. Now let's create a multiply. Now we're going to multiply time by the noise speed. And we connect the result of that to the X component of this vector two. Now let's get the scale and input the scale into here. Now let's set everything up nicely. Now in the same way as we did for the random, we're also going to copy this and paste this for the Y component. So the only thing we need to change here is this one becomes the Y input and we'll disconnect this one. Now the output of this noise is between zero and one, and we need to have values between minus one and one to offset the camera either into the left or the right or the up and the down position. So to change the outcome of this number, we can use the remap function. Now the income is between zero and one, and the out is between minus one and one. We'll do the same for the Y component. Connect this one, zero, one, minus one, and one. And to show you a sample of the noise, let's open up this one and set the default values here to one and the speed to one. And as you can see, there's a very smooth transition on these colors. So if I set the noise scale a little bit higher, it should change uh, more often, but it still feels very smooth because that is the characteristics of noise. Let me disconnect this one to show you the noise. So let's set the scale a little bit higher. As you can see, it's never going from minus one to one or from zero to one, making some kind of a gradient to get to the next number. Compare that to random and then you see the difference in behavior. Let's close this one, connect this back again, put this back here. Let's select everything, press Ctrl G, and we're gonna call this noise shake X, Y. Now we need to get this outcome into this vector four, but it's already connected to random. So we need to do something in between to decide whether we want to use the random or we want to use the noise shake. So we're going to add another float you might think, hey, let's use a Boolean for this, but I'm actually going to use a float. And we'll call this float use random. And this float will actually function as a Boolean. Let's drag this into the scene. Now, let me explain why I use a float instead of a Boolean. If I use a Boolean, let's create a Boolean. Bool. Let's create an if statement. If statement, it's called a branch. 
Now I can use the bull on this branch. I can't use the float onto this one. So I have to use a boolean. And then with this branch, if the value is true, then we can say, hey, we want to use the random. And if it's false, we want to use the noise. But this is an if statement. In a shader, you really try to avoid using if statements because you want to have the shader follow the same path. So instead of using a boolean, I'm going to use a lerp. So let's remove this and add a lerp. Now a lerp goes from zero to one or somewhere in between. And I'm going to actually use the use random onto here. Now what I find a little bit confusing with shader graph is that I can't use this boolean and put this into this slot. Because in essence, a boolean is nothing else than a zero or a one, a one for true and a zero for false. So we're gonna use a float value, but in the screen shake setting script, we're going to use a boolean. And then whether that boolean is true or false, we're going to set this float value to either zero or one. Let's disconnect these lines, put this a little bit back. And we're gonna put this lerp in between here. Let's actually duplicate this for the X and the Y component. Now, if this is true, we want to get the random shake. So let's get this one and put it in there. And if it's false, then we want to get the X of this one. If it's true, we want to get the Y of this. And if it's false, we want to get the Y of the noise. Now we can connect this outcome into X and we can connect this outcome into Y. Let's put everything back into a nice place. And that should be all for the functionality of the shader. So let's save the shader. And go back to Unity. Now let's go to the screen shake settings. And here we're going to add the parameters that we just added to the shader. I'm going to make a header. So let's type header here. I'm going to call this shake behave. And I'm going to call this shake behavior. And I'm going to call this shake behavior. Now in the shader, we use the float to select whether we're going to use the random or the noise. And in this script, we're going to set up a bool parameter. So let's type public bool parameter. And we'll call this random shake. So basically, if this is true, then we're going to use random shake. And if it's false, then we're going to use the noise shake. It's going to be a new bool parameter. And its value is going to be false. Now we need to set up the noise speed and noise scale. These are floats, so I'm going to copy paste the lines from here. Paste them there. This is going to be noise scale. And this is going to be noise speed. And for now, I'm going to set the minimum at zero and the maximum at 100. So we can play with the settings and then later we can narrow down which numbers are correct to put in here. Let's also get the offset percentage and move it over to the shake behavior. Now that's it for the screen shake settings. So hit control S for save. And now to apply the settings to the shader, let's open up the renderer feature. Let's scroll down to the execute. Now let's type material.setFloat. And we're going to set the float. I forgot what it's called. Use random. We should change this into random shake. So they match up. Let's delete this one. Save it. Now it's called random shake, the same name as we used in the settings. So the name here is random shake. Now we're going to set this flow to the outcome of the boolean. Now we can do this by typing screen shake settings dot random shake dot its value. And we can type a short if statement and say if the outcome is true, then we're going to set it to 1.0. And if it's false, then we'll set it to 0.0. .0. Now we want to set the noise scale and the noise speed. So let me copy paste these lines. Change this to noise scale. 
noise scale and change this to noise speed noise speed and let's save the script and go back to unity now i made a mistake and you probably all saw it but i forgot to multiply the outcome of the noise by the shake strength so let's do that in the shader so you can see that it's multiplied by the shake strength x and y and i forgot to put that in between so let's type multiply uh, copy paste this uh, put the outcome here this one here get the shake strength x shake strength y and now this one goes here and this one goes here now let's save that and go back to unity now let's make sure these numbers aren't zero you can set the dead zone and let's test out the noise to test out the noise i'm going to disable the controller for a little bit and set this one to one to one as well now let's see what happens when we change the scale so you can see it's now moving very smoothly it's a bit of a different shake than uh, you get with the random but of course if you set the numbers really high then it will look just as if it is a random shake that's it for this part in the next part we will create a shape to make the screen shake shader partial thank you for following so far and thanks to all my patrons to stay updated with new content subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on Happy coding.